I am back, and today is gonna be a doozy. Oh, shit. I am back, and today is gonna be a doozy. Today I am testing six professional direct dye lifters. Now, direct dye lifters are different than oxidative color removers, which you may have seen in a previous video. Oxidative color removers are for removing permanent and demi-permanent color, colors that are mixed with developer in order to be effective. Direct dye color removers are for removing direct dye or semi-permanent dye colors that run the spectrum like this. So these are my control swatches where we're gonna compare all of these colors today. This is a category of color removers that is really new and a lot of different brands have come out with them. And so I decided to test some. If this is your first time here, I'm Cosmo Dad. This is what I do. I'm a cosmetologist and hair educator. I teach in salon education as well as take guests here in Austin, Texas. If you like to get nerdy about hair and you wanna take this trip with me, feel free to comment and subscribe. Let's talk about these color removers. Uh, most of them are fairly similar and have a similar list of ingredients. This is really my one outlier. The ingredients are very, very different in this box. For years, Rusk has had Eliminate, comes in a gray box for removing oxidative colors. Ooh. And if you ever tried it on direct dye, you know it's not that effective. So it comes with a liquid and a processing lotion. That's developer. It doesn't say what volume it is. If I tested it, I suspect it wouldn't be more than 20 volume. Now, the interesting thing about this one is it has a different base and different ingredients than all the rest of these. All the rest of the direct dye color removers I'm testing today are very similar to lightener. You're gonna find ingredients like potassium persulfate and ammonium persulfate. If those, whoa, if those sound familiar, it's because I have potassium persulfate and ammonium persulfate right here. So an important thing to know about these, they will actually remove any color, but they won't be as gentle on the hair as oxidative color removers. In any case, I'm gonna put the ingredients to each of these in the description below so you can check them out. So we'll mix this up and see how it does. We're gonna be comparing it. Joyco Color Intensity Eraser, Pulp Riot Blank Canvas, Paul Mitchell's Pop XG, So Color Cult Color Eraser, and Malibu C's DDL XL. The consistency and the mixing ratio varies in all of these. They all have persulfates, but there's some, some that are kind of divergent from one another and some that are similar to one another in different ways. Or these three are labeled to be mixed with developer or water. These two are labeled to be mixed only with developer. 20 volume, six, 10 or 20. This is water, 10 or 20. This is water or 20. And this is water, 10 or 20. 20. So for the purposes of this video, the three that are labeled to be mixed with water, I will mix with both water and 20 volume. So I have two separate bowls for each of those. These two will be mixed only with 20 volume. I will mix the eliminate according to the manufacturer's recommendations, which is one part of number one to one part of number two. And as a control, we'll mix up some Wella Blondor with 20 volume as well. And I'll apply it along this spectrum of color where I have a demi-permanent at the roots, and then all of these uh, Roy G. Biv of uh, semis going down through the ends. None of these are labeled to be applied on the scalp or processed under heat, which is super important to note. So though the mixing ratios on these two, oops, though the mixing ratios on these two are different, they visually they look very, very similar, and I imagine it's because they both have ultramarines in them. They both have ultramarines in them, which is, what gives classic lightener that blue tinge rather than being white. The Pulp Riot comes out white. Now the Paul Mitchell and the Malibu C both come out brown and kind of weird looking. And I imagine that is because these are the only two that contain bentonite, which is an absorbent clay. In fact, these two, the ingredient list is so similar, they're almost identical. First ingredient, ammonium persulfate, potassium persulfate both active lightener ingredients, followed by, in both of them, bentonite, sodium metasilicate, xanthan gum, disodium EDTA, which is a clarifier, sodium cocal isethionate, sodium carbonate. This one then contains potassium persulfate, so this has both of those persulfates in it, followed by the final ingredient, polyquaternium 10, in both of them. So extremely similar formulas for both of these. 
found that interesting. When you find something in the hair industry that works, you're going to find somebody else who formulates similar. I'm not sure which one came out on the market first. Not like it really matters either. Something else to note about these before I get to mixing up is each of these powder based ones are all packaged in single use packages. So if you're a stylist wondering which one of these is going to be most cost effective for me, honestly, it's probably going to be the ones that are most cost effective per ounce in the smallest packages because you cannot close any of these and save them for later. The persulfate concentration in here is high enough that once it's exposed to air, it basically begins going flat uh, and it's not going to be as effective. So keep that in mind when you're budgeting or deciding which one of these is really the best choice. Let me get to measuring, mixing, and applying. The Joyco one has a particularly strong smell, stronger than your typical lightener. With the exception of the rusk, which isn't a persulfate. <laughs> that Paul Mitchell has finally mellowed out to like a nice smooth creamy consistency and I can see how this would be nice and easy to move through the hair. Though the version mixed with water according to ratio is a bit on the thin side. So far the strongest smelling ones are probably going to be the Joyco and the So Color Cult color eraser. I wonder if the strong smell has anything to do with the ultramarines. Huh, I don't know. Whoa, the DDL XL got real puffy. Oh my gosh, I wish I could have. It's like real marshmallowy. Paul Mitchell one's still creamy. DDL is fluffy. And that rusk is like a, um, like a, a gel consistency. It has been five and a half minutes since I started applying just with the traditional bleach, made my way down the line. So as we look from this side to this side, this side's only had about a minute to process. Let's take a nice good look at that. Blondor's looking good. Joyco's looking good. The Pulp Riot is looking good. The Rusk doesn't look like a whole lot's happening, but then when you start scraping it, it looks like a bunch of the pigments coming off. So this is the color eraser and the Malibu with their 20 volumes. And you can see how much faster and more efficiently than the water that's working. Something to keep in mind though, if you can get away with water, why not use water? Because you're removing color. Each of these unknown on the rusk, each of the rest of these will lift natural pigment as well. You know that they are some form of lightener. We've got to be careful and lift as slow as we possibly can whenever possible. I'm going to continue timing and we'll be back with the results. Are you ready for the big reveal? Which one of these color removers reigns supreme? Quick review. Of all of these color removers, the Rusk Eliminate is the only one without persulfates. It has some other stuff going on, even though it still does use developer. It also has the lowest recommended processing time of 20 minutes. So I left the Eliminate on for 20 minutes. I left everything else on for 30 minutes because maximum processing time for all of these ranged between 30 and 45 minutes. So 20 minutes for the rusk, 30 for everything else, including the lightener. Check it out. This is the untreated swatch. This is Wella Blondor with 20 volume for 30 minutes. Then we have our rusk. Joyco Pulp Riot. Pop with 20 volume. Water. So Color Cult with 20 volume and water. Malibu DDL XL with 20 volume and water. At first glance, it looks like 
the blue was removed really well with the So Color Cult and 20 volume, but also the Paul Mitchell Pop with Water did a better job removing the blue than the Pop with 20 volume. That's a really interesting result. Though probably the one that removed the yellow the best seems to be the DDL with 20 volume. They all removed violet okay, with the exception of Rusk, not so much. Once again, this being our original. So what do you think? Is there a clear winner? Or are they all pretty much the same? They all feel fairly similar. None of them feel awful. And that's, that's pretty much all I got. I'm not sure if I could choose a clear winner. I think the Pop and the So Color Cult overall performed really similarly and the DDL removed yellow the best. Rusk is definitely at the bottom, and none of them did a very good job removing the red or orange. All right, well, let me know if I missed something. Thanks so much for sticking around, and I'll see you next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. If you like what you saw and you wanna see some more, go ahead and check out some of my other videos. Feel free to share with any of your nerdy friends. Click the subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Let me know what else you wanna hear about. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you next time.